Good morning, and <laughs> welcome to our Sunday school class. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and get right into our Sunday school lesson because we don't have a lot of time today. Um, Happy Mother's Day to all the moms, stepmom, biological um, moms, all moms, cat moms, all the moms, grandmothers. Um, yes, I did because some people don't have children but they have pets. I thought you meant they were cats. No. Cat moms and kids. No. Any dog moms out there? No. Okay, anyway. So the parable we're going to do today is um, the sower of the seeds. And it's. um, Oh. Um, So. When, uh, the lesson that we should learn today from this is our heart must be right in order that the seed may be productive. In order for the seed to be productive. Uh, we're going to get into... Well, let's read the scriptures first. Okay, so um, this parable is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It is not in John. So let's do Matthew 13, 3 through 8. Okay, Bill. Um, Mark 4, 1 through 9. Grace, did you want to read group? If you don't have to, if you don't want to. Okay, and then Luke 8, 5 through 8. No, I didn't mean to. No. Okay. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some, some fell on stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up, but because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some, some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some in hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who oh, have the ears to hear? But I'm here. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it was. Um, and he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up, and increased, and brought forth, some thirty, and some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to be left. A sower went out to sow a seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, it became black moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it, and choked it. And other fell on good ground, and sprang up, and bare fruit, and hunger. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him. Okay. <laughs> Luke. Where was, where was the chicken? Luke was uh, eight, eight, five, eight, five eight. through eight. Okay. Um, Luke's detail that he gives was not very detailed. Yeah, the things that he chooses to tell yes, are not, yeah. Okay, it didn't have us read the explanation, so. Okay. Well, that's, okay, in Matthew, it's 18 through 23. Hear ye therefore the parable, sorry, go ahead. I'm not reading this. It's all right. 18 through 23. Right. <clears throat> this is the scriptures to explain what it's talking yes. about. Hear ye therefore the parable of the okay. sower. <laughs> when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed in stony, in stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. 
Yet hath he not ruined himself, but dureth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the world and the care of heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receiveth received seed in the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Um Luke's is, no Mark's is four sixteen. Luke's is four sixteen. Yeah. The sower soweth the word, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the loss of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some hundred. And then Luke's is uh, 11 through 15. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their heart, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fail away. Fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they, which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches, and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which have an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. Okay. So those are just explanations of them. But I want to go to Mark. Mark's reading and <laughs> explanation of um, the seeds. Because I really like how um, Mark, I like how Mark explained this. <laughs> okay. So we have so we have three different ways, three different grounds that the seeds fall on. We have why can't I get this? Let me move this. I can't see the scriptures. Okay. The first ground we we see is the wayside. And then the second ground is the stony ground. So really we have four grounds, not three. There's the wayside, stony ground, among thorns, and then good ground. Um, I like how Mark explained the grounds that they were uh, put, the grounds that the seeds fell on. So let's go to Mark 14. All right. Let's talk about, let's get into, you know, the commentary, is the commentary good? Yeah, just okay. for Matthew Henry. The rest of it's kind of, you know, he's, he's the one who actually He's the one stuff. that asked, yeah. But this is Matthew Henry's commentary about the sower of the seeds. This parable contained instructions so important that all capable of hearing were bound to attend to it. There are many things we are concerned to know, and if we understand not the plain truths of the gospel, how shall we learn those more difficult? It will help us to value the privileges we enjoy as disciples of Christ, we seriously consider the deplorable state of all who have not such privileges. In the great field of the church, the word of God is dispensed to all. Of the many that hear the word of the gospel, but few receive it, so as to bring forth fruit. Many are much affected with the word for the present, but yet receive no abiding benefit. The word does not leave abiding impressions upon the minds of men, because their hearts are not truly disposed to receive it. The devil is very busy about careless hearers, as the fowls of the air go about the seed that lies among them. Many continue in a barren, false profession and go down to hell. Impressions that are not deep will not last. Many do not mind heart work, without which religion is nothing. Others are hindered from profiting, profiting by the word of God, by abundance of the world. And those who have but little of the world may yet be ruined by indulging the body. God expects and requires fruit from those who enjoy the gospel, a temper of mind and Christian grace of daily exercise, and Christian duties to live for. Let us look to the Lord that by his new creating grace our hearts may become good ground, 
and that the good seed of the word may produce in our lives those good words and works which are through Jesus Christ for the praise and glory of God the Father. That's good. Good job, Matthew. Okay. Mark 14. All right. Um, yes. It, Mark, four, Mark 14 uh, through 20 is just explaining what the grounds are. And I'm glad when they talked about the grounds that they gave an explanation of them. Because I think that some people reading it be like, so what are these grounds? What do they represent? Sure. What are the things that are, um, what are the things that are destroying these seeds that have been thrown, um, that have been thrown out and stuff? And so Mark says the wayside, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately. And take away the word that was sown in their hearts. So before the word was even rooted into their hearts, it was taken away. And that makes, I don't know about y'all, but it makes me think of just going to church on holidays. Or going to church for you know, years and just becoming, you know, becoming dead to it. Yeah. We said, you know. There's times where I have to remind myself of what Jesus has done because it turns into every, you know, every week. Right. And you're like, we oh, do, Jesus, do for me. I've heard this. I've heard this before. Right. Immediately take away the word. Exactly. So you can have, I mean, you can have a hard heart based on anything, you know, and, and if you do, then it makes it a lot harder to receive. Yeah. Sure. When you do something over and over again, it's well, like... the number of times you're like, well, yeah. you know, it, oh, they're only preaching that for me because they know, you know, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. That's just right, but horrible. that's you not know, even... Just that's going back and forth. Right. You're, you're already... Whenever you look at something with a... With it, uh, you know, an impression that they are trying to do, you know, with a hard heart, if you look at yeah. things thinking that it's going to be bad, you will see it be bad. It's very hard to change your opinions on that kind of thing. And that gives room for the enemy to just come and just take it away. Sure. And you don't think it, he did. You think no, it's just it's still right there. Yeah. You think you, you think it's their fault. Right. And then okay. And then on the the other one. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises from the word's sake, immediately they are offended. That's what is interesting. Yes, very much so. It reminds me of, oh, sorry. Go ahead, no, go ahead, go ahead. It's different than all the others because in this case, sorry, no, uh, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, no, so I'm probably going to say the same thing you were about to say. Most likely. Um, these are the people who they want all the good things about yeah. salvation, but then they don't have um, they don't have the roots. They don't have the patience to. Um, to actually please the Lord and do the things He wants them to do. They just want it right away. I just want to go to heaven, and I want to, I want to be happy. But when you actually have to give things up, then that's that's the line for them. And I think it's, it's, too, it's too also, hard. I can't do it. Yeah, I think it could also describe people who who do it and live other people's lives instead of their own Christian life. Is, you know, this is because this is the only one really other than the good ground that actually received the word and 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 wanted the word. As far as he received it with God and his mom. Um, okay, um, and then the good seed. The good seed is no, there it is. Thorns, no, thorns, thorns, well, thorns, thorns choked out the seed, the good yes. seed is in the ground. The, That's the right. thorns when you talk about thorns. Well when birds, you talk about seeds. thorns though um Putting something among thorns, it's automatically not going to grow. Sure. It's not going to, you're not going to get anything from that because it's thorns we're talking about. Things that you put your hand in there, you're going to get, you're going to get hurt. It's going to poke you. It's going to stab you. All these things are poking, poking, all these Yes. Different, these different yes. Things and so you have to get rid of those thorns to be able to do that. And then, of course, and these are they which are sown on good ground. Such as hear the word, receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirty fold, some sixty, and some a hundred fold. These are the ones that this good ground is someone that really wanted something different. Really wanted to hear the word of God and their lives be changed. And then they go forth 
once their lives are changed, they want to go and tell somebody else how, you know, how good it was for them to change and not necessarily do it to where, well, you better go and do this so you can do, you can have this. But no, like, listen, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you what he's done for me in my life. Um, I was just at church Sunday or Wednesday or whatever day that it is. Um, and G he really opened my eyes and, and made me look at how I was doing things and how my life was and how amazing he is. This is the good ground. And this is what, this is what, when sincere preachers are really preaching, they want the, their, the seed that they're talking of to fall on that good ground. It may not always. Sometimes it could only be that one person that it touches. And one is good enough. It's great. And when we talk about the four grounds, which ground is your ground? Or is it falling on the wayside? Is it stony ground? Um, has it fallen among thorns? Um, is it good ground? You know, we really need to think about it when we, when we continue to go to church every day, continue the routine of our day-to-day -day life about the Word of God and how we're letting it fall and where we're letting it fall. So I hope that you're letting it fall on good ground. And that every time you read it or every time that you hear it, it's you're receiving it and that it's helping you with your walk with Christ. So we hope you enjoyed our Sunday school lesson and we'll see you in the Sunday worship. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs>